the 520 and the 5,760. Notice it still adds up to the 100,000 here, but the timing is different. That's going to affect our taxes each year. So our, our taxes are going to be different even if we assume a, a fixed rate of 40% here. So the income tax, uh, we're going to say the taxable income is the 72,500 minus the 20,000. And we got the 72,500 minus the 32,000. We've got the 72,500 minus the 19,2, the 72,500 minus the 11,520, and so on and so forth. Then we're going to calculate the income tax. Remember, the income tax we're saying is a flat rate for our estimates here of 40%. Therefore, taxable income 52500 times 0.4, we get the 21,000 for year one. Same thing here, 40,500 times 0.4, we get the 16,2533 times the 0.4, we get the 21,320, and so on. And then we're going to calculate net income. Net income is the, ta is the taxable income minus the income tax. So this 52,5 minus the 21,000 net income. I'm going to go all the way through that, and that's not really what we're looking for. I'm completing the table there because we want to see net income usually, because that's usually what we're going for. But... This time we're looking for the net cash flows. We want the net cash flows. That's what we're going to have the present value on. So we're going to take this 72.5, 72.5 minus the taxes that we have on here. That's going to be the thing that's actually cash flow, 21,000. So we're in year one, we're talking 51.5, 51.5. Notice we're looking at cash flow. We're not taking the cash inflow minus the depreciation expense for the net income effect because that depreciation expense does not uh, reflect cash flow. So we've got uh, that same calculation all the way down, the 72.5 here, minus the income tax, which in this case was the 36.588 and so on. If we add those up, we get the same uh, 301,000 of cash at the end of the time period that we did when we looked at the straight line method, but we have a difference in terms of timing. It's the timing that's gonna be different here now we want to calculate, we want to present value this. So we want to have a real calculation and be able to compare these two. We're going to say, well, is it better to use a straight line or is it better to use makers? How can we compare this? Well, we have to present value the calculations. Now, in order to present value it, we need a discount rate to do this. We're going to assume a discount rate of 10%. Now, why are we assuming a 10% discount rate? Where would we get you know, a 10% discount rate? What, what is that? When we're looking at long-term projects, we're going to have to come up with some kind of rate of return that we want to receive on that in order to do the present value calculation. We're going to get that rate of return in a few different ways. One, obviously, again, we need to clear inflation, like 1% to 3%. But we also want to think about what we can put the money in somewhere else, so the opportunity cost of the money. If we had the 100000 we could put it in this project. We could put it into another project. And if the other project could get a 10% return, then that's kind of like the hurdle that we need to get. So we need to, we're going to set some type of benchmark and it, that will be inherent in the calculation here. So we're going to say that we want a 10% return when we calculate the present value. If we get any number that is positive, that means that we have received a 10% return and that would generally be good. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're going to say the year, year one, We've got the 47.5. We're just pulling over these numbers here. 47.5, year 2, 51.5, year 3. We had the 51.5, year 4, 51.5, year 5, 51.5, and year 6 back to the 47.5. Then we need to figure out what the present value is, the present value factor. Now, in order to do this, we could use a formula. We could use tables. When we think about this first time, it looks very confusing. But uh, we're going to use tables in this example. If you do it a few times, not very bad after you do it a few times one you though you need to pick the right table <laughs> to make sure that you're doing it correctly and then you just need to have the factors in order to to look up the information so let's take a look at the types of tables we would see if we were just to look up present value tables we've got a uh, present value of one what does that mean that means that we're going to take some time period into the future if we took a time period like five years out and we had the discount rate our discount rate was 10 percent then we're trying to figure out what, you know, some money, if it was 100,000 five years out, would be worth in today's money. So we would be taking the five times the uh, 0.6209. And of course, that number is going to be less than the 100,000. So if we got 100,000 uh, at a later point in time, at a 10% discount, that would be it. There's also future value of one. So this is sometimes confusing when we think about the future value. What that's trying to do is trying to figure out, let's take 
current dollars and put them into future values. And note the point of these two things is that we're trying to get the money in the same type of measuring tool. So I want to take the future dollars in today's time usually, but we could also just take the today's dollars into the future time, which we want apples to apples as they say. We want the same thing to the same thing. Usually we want to bring the money back to today's dollars and that's why we're going to usually use the present values. You'll also see a present value of an annuity table. An annuity is something that just repeats in value, meaning uh, if we were going to get a rate of return that's constant, you'll notice that our rate of return here was constant and the depreciation was constant except that we had that half year convention. If we didn't have that half year convention, we could basically use the annuity table because it, it would be a constant rate. So instead of us having to calculate the present value each year and pull each year's number back to the current, we could then use an annuity table and just and just have one uh, calculation. So that's going to be the annuity. And then you'll see the future value of an annuity. Same type of idea as the future value up here, uh, trying to put today's money into the future time period. So of course, we're going to be using the present value of one, and we're going to be calculating each of the time periods individually. So if we looked at the, time val the present value of one table, and we said that we have a 10% discount, and we're looking at years one, through year six, this is the, these are going to be the numbers we're going to have to use over here. So if we're talking about money we're going to receive at the end of year one, if we received $1,000 at the end of year one, it wouldn't be worth $1,000. We'd have to multiply times this 0.9 to include this discount rate of 10%. Two years out, that same $1,000 in two years out would only be worth 1,000 times 0.82. Three years out, that $1,000 would only be 1,000 times 0.75 and whatnot, and so on and so forth. So if we go through that calculation, I'm just pulling those present value factors here and we're going to say, okay, we got 47.5 cash flow times the 0.9091 gives us the 43.182 in year one. Year two, we've got the 51,500 times that present value factor of 0.8264 gives us the 42.560. Year three, notice we have the same number in cash flow, but it's three years out now. Therefore, the discount rate is less and the present value in today's dollars at the discount rate of 10% is lower at 38,692. Then we've got the 50, same number, smaller discount rate, therefore smaller present value, same number, smaller discount rate in year five, therefore smaller present value. And then in year six, we have the 26,814. Uh, if we were then to add up the inflows, we're gonna add these up, they have a present value inflow, cash inflows of 218,398. The present value of the cash outflow is just going to be the initial investment, which was that 100,000. So that we don't have to do anything to because we did that today. <laughs> we did it in year one. So there's no present value factor that we need to do there. Uh, if we did have a longer type of expenses for maintenance and stuff like that, we would have to figure out the present value of the outflows as well. And if we subtract that out, then we're saying that in today's dollars we've got we've got the 218 398 minus the 100,000 we've it means we have a positive net present value of the 118 now note what that means even if this was one dollar positive then it would still be a good investment in that we would have gotten a return of 10 percent that's going to be the idea here that's what this discount rate means so any number that's positive means we got a return of 10 percent we got a return greater than 10 percent but we don't know exactly what it is because we don't, we, all we know is that we cleared the 10% and got more money in that than that. But we can compare this to the same calculation for the double declining method. So we're going to do the same thing. We got years one. Uh, we got the 51.5 here. This is the cash flows. We're just pulling the cash flows over, pulling the cash flow over for year three, year four, year five, and year six. Okay, and then we're going to have the same present value factors. So we're going to use these same present value factors we used last time and multiply those out. So we got the same present value factor here. So year one, 51,500 times the 0 0.909, and we've got the 46,819. Now, of course, the difference is the present value factors are the same. The difference is the timing of the cash flows. So in year two, we had the 56,300 times the 0.8264 gives us the 46. We've got the 51,180 times the 0.7, three years out, so it's a smaller uh, present value factor. Year four, year five, and year six. So if we add these up then, 
We have the present value cash flows. We're adding up the present value cash flows over here. And that's going to give us the 220, 381. The initial investment, that's what we invested in day one. We don't have to present value it because it was day one when we did it. The 100,000, that means we got the net present value of the 120, 381. So if we compare these two then, we're, we're going to say that the makers comes out with a higher net present value discounted there. Again, it's not, it's not, we don't know exactly what the return is under makers than, than the straight line. We know that they both clear the 10%, so we would be making over 10% in either calculation. But the makers is, is higher, and therefore we would be better off in order to use an accelerated method. And that would be expected. Why would that be expected? Because makers means that we're going to get more deductions in the first years of the tax years and less of the deductions in the later years. And because of the time value of money, that's going to give us an effect in that uh, we're better off in terms of present value terms from using an accelerated method rather than a straight line method.